Hello everyone, Tanak here. Welcome to a special episode uh, where I'm going to go over uh, the financial aspect of running uh, a small to mid-size alliance like, uh, like WAMP. Uh, what I want to do is show you a little bit like month after month because uh, I'm, I'm you're, you're seeing the progress uh, the progress report uh, at each episode but what I'm not I haven't been show, showing you so far is the actual uh, income in expenses of the of the coalition so I'm going to show you the exactly like the detail of uh, of our finances uh, this is what uh, what I'm showing on screen right now, I'll see if I can put it bigger so that everybody can see. Uh, this was during our pure blind uh, operation. Uh, so what you will see there is the number when we arrive in pure blind. Uh, the first month we arrive uh, end of December, but the first full month that we were there was January. And as the corp grew, our how the uh, how the alliance uh, income and expenses uh, worked. So uh, the way you extract those number, and I want to go a little bit into the the, the logistic of this, is because you can't get those number easily if you go at on, under the alliance wallet, uh, corporation wallet here. Uh, you you will have to go into the transaction here. And then you can like it's uh, it's super long when you have like a, a large group. Well, and it's a, not even a large group, like a three hundred person alliance. The the number of line to load is uh, very high. So what you will see is individual uh, individual uh, line in the wallet. Like okay, there's an escrow payment and everything. So you got a lot of stuff like this to manage when you're. Uh, when you're an alliance leader or anybody that's that's running the accounting for an alliance or the, the number so what you will do is at the end of each month uh, what i what i need to do is i will go here and as you see it's lagging it's lagging like crazy and ccp isn't gracious enough to give us a summary so let's say i wanted the number for uh, for may i will need to go in may I will I can get all my transaction and then I would need to uh, suppose I want the agent mission reward I would need to filter these types of uh, of number and you can get a lot of a lot of them if I if I go like for I'll give you an example the writing tax so writing tax would be bounty prices your bounty prizes plus CSS would be your writing tax and you get a lot of them so just for the month of May for WAMP uh, we had 3000 entry in there so what I will do what I would what I do after that is at the end of each month I go in a sheet here and I will export individual line like this and grab my total for each uh, category uh, it would be super nice if uh, if uh, ccp would give us a summary of that but i'm doing it manually just so that i, that I can keep track uh, and as you see uh, there there's different categories so the way the reason i'm filtering it like that is because it's that's the way it's given to me in uh, in the in the alliance wallet uh, but also it give us an ability to to see like the types of tax that we're doing so, of, of the type of different revenue stream and how much they're paying us um, so a good uh, a big part of an of an alliance income and i would say uh, it's probably true for any alliance that live in LSEC. Uh, writing tax is a big, big revenue stream. Uh, the, we got our taxes set at 10%, which is a pretty standard uh, for, uh, for any an LSEC group. Uh, and initially, when we, when we started in Pure Blind, we had about 150 members, if I remember correctly. Uh, and we were pulling about like 3.5 bill a month uh, initially in writing tax. So that is the charging the 10% uh, tax. At the end, we were pulling 
uh, 11 bill. So, but at that time we were now a six, uh, uh, almost a 600 men alliance and 600 character alliance, uh, at least 150 active member. So we were pulling bigger numbers. So th that is a significant part of the corp income, uh, the alliance income. Uh, the other uh, thing that we are doing uh, is we had a market hub. So market tax, we are setting the minimum uh, market tax of 1%. And just between ourselves, we were pulling like uh, 1.7 bill at the end of the pure blind era. Uh, our number right now are not uh, that big. We don't even have a market hub yet, uh, but our number are more in line with uh, what we were like. Uh, well, we basically we, we asked our uh, we, we divided our size by two since we since we left uh, uh, compared to where we were at the end of pure blind. So obviously we're not pulling those number anymore. Uh, but uh, market market tax was another was an important part. Industry facility tax. This is what you're getting from uh, refining job, build job, uh, and you have to offset with the fuel cost. Uh, basically uh the way i the way you can put this is unless you're you start you're charging very high for your facility tax uh station and structure are uh, services you offer your member they're losing money even if you're charging some basic uh, basic fee uh, you're losing money the way we have it is we have most of our taxes at uh the production tax is around, uh, I think, 5%. And uh, the refining tax is half a percent. Could we put raise that more? Yes, we could. Uh, industry is already not really profitable. So we want to encourage local industry. So we're keeping our, our local uh, our local tax, uh, our local services tax pretty low, which end up being that these the structure are financed by the other taxes in the group. Uh, Poco tax is surprisingly enough for a large group. Uh, it can become a good revenue stream. Uh, we are we were making like 1.5 bill uh, a month at the end of our pure blind era, and this is just from us and our blues and Womp didn't have that many blues that were using our POCO. So it's mostly us that were using our POCO. So it is a significant uh, revenue stream and reprocessing tax, which is different from the, the services fee. The services fee is uh, a reaction production uh, as in reprocessing is just basic reprocessing. Uh, and the other poll that we have, another big big uh, revenue stream for for any NullSec alliance and actually any any large alliance uh, that is starting to have structure is uh, moon tax. Uh, the way we work in WAMP and you, you got different system. Initially, when we arrive in PureBlind, we had some nationalized uh, R64 moon because we were not part of a coalition. We were we were our own coalition so we we own 100 percent of our moon we were taxing 100 percent of the r64 with uh, ping uh, ping the up for, uh, at the alliance level and what we ended up uh, seeing is that at some point you got to make it worthwhile for your member to do uh, to, to to actually participate in those so taxing 100 percent nationalized moon uh, didn't work very well and personally as a as an alliance leader i didn't like it very much because i like my industry i like anybody that's con actively contributing to earn something out of it so we switched in march to a 20 percent uh, uh rate on all mineral mined during our, at any of our station so any moon pool is uh, free mining and the person, the people contract back uh, twenty percent of what they mine to the alliance. Uh, there's a there's a person uh, we have a person in, an officer in the alliance that is handling and tracing and checking with the mining log and and everything to to make sure that 
uh, everybody's paying their tax, but it works pretty well. And what it did for us was uh, basically make may, made it worthwhile for us as an alliance to set up more Athenor and mine more Moon, which were not R64. So we started mining some R32, R16 uh, to get a complete set of uh, reaction material. Uh, and it does combo with your facility tax because uh, as you saw here when people started mining more mineral well they could do more reaction uh, which feed uh, it's giving us a, it's giving a positive feedback loop. Uh, here what you're seeing is uh, other corp that were part uh, member corp in the alliance and how much they contributed in writing tax so uh, uh, Guns R Us is the executor corp, so all their writing tax goes to the alliance. Uh, the 10% goes to the alliance. Member corp in WOMP, uh, the way we had it set up was that they had 10% tax. The, the member corp kept half for their own fund and they put half to the, at the alliance level uh, to contribute to the SRP fund, that which we'll see when we, when we see the expense. So... All in all, that is still an extra revenue stream. And other asset that we have here is uh, Soul Loot. Uh, unrealized asset uh, was uh, basically donation that we received uh, in stuff. <laughs> so I think I will put it there. Uh, Soul Loot was uh, people coming in our pocket and guys shooting it and typically when the way we work initially is when we're doing a home defense fleet uh, we will always give the loot to anybody that lost ship as srp uh, and at this specific time we were in pure blind at the end we were shooting uh, people were putting marauders in our in our space so any any type of uh, of loot that we would sell if nobody lost chip we would return it to the alliance to contribute to the srp fund because we knew we were going uh, to, to try to to expand so we were building our war chest at this part so as you see when we arrive in pure blind we were like a small 100 uh, 100 150 character alliance and we were at the end we were a 600 uh, character alliance so there we multiply our revenue by 10 by the end but th that's one exception that one is exceptional so we were pulling maybe uh i would say about 20 bill uh, a month uh in in income uh but you get to ups i mean this, this is not pure profit obviously uh what we did have to do is uh, pay monthly high up so people that don't know uh when you're in null sec any high hub that you own is uh, 42 million a week so we own seven system back then so we had to pay uh, 42 times seven every week so it's 300 uh, three basically 300 uh, million a, a week so 1.2 uh, 1.2 bill every month uh, this is a fix fixed cost that you have to do uh, another part that you have to pay is uh, you got to pay the the fuel for your station um, we used to we we used to buy fuel uh, either from Jita or from people producing it in pocket. Uh, but at the end, with the amount the structure footprint that we have, we, we it was costing us me around four hundred bill, uh, four bill. I mean, worth of fuel every month. And then uh, I didn't have the number for all the other month, so it's probably uh, it was probably lower than that. But we started tracing it at the end as. Uh, SRP is, was basically the SR the, the money I'm paying back the, to member when they lose ship. Uh, obviously, that's a big big expense for any alliance. If you're not losing any ship, uh, your, your war chest is going up. But you have to pay. You have to make your member whole when they when they contribute. I mean, they are contributing to you uh, to your cause uh, by being there, by ratting, by paying tax. So you got to uh, basically insure their ship for them and pay them back when they left. Uh, and WOMP was always doing uh, uh, full SRP for most of our lifetime. At the end, we switched to a mode where we were doing 80% SRP. So it's 80% of the value of a, uh, of a contract. 
of of contra of getting your your ship back uh deducting insurance from that the re the reason we didn't do a hundred percent was that we still wanted to encourage the people not to lose their ship so uh, eighty percent was a good uh, good deal and we always paid s r p the entire existence of this alliance i never never once we were in a situation where i couldn't pay back the s r p we were always very careful. We would tone down if we if we saw that we were getting tight on budget. We would tone down our number of operation to be able to afford to make sure that we could afford DSRP. Uh, so that's one big expense here. What you're seeing infrastructure was basically high ups and TCU that we were buying in a provision to of expanding in another constellation. Uh, so that is uh, obviously. Uh, Extra, extra cost that that you'll have uh, what you're not seeing here uh, because we didn't track it at the time was the the cost of set, setting uh, various uh, station all around the all around the, the our space uh, and it is a big a big uh, cost here in uh, in cat in, uh, in catch as well uh, because Basically, let me see if I got, I'll grab the map here. But when, when you claim an, an area like here, uh, each of these, re, if each of these system, you, you need to put a high hub in. So an, an high hub goes for five, 500 mil. And then you want to upgrade your high up. So you want to add pirate detection array. You want pirate detection array one, two, three, four, or five if you want to push a system to the maximum, which costs respectively like 100, 200, 300, 400, 500 mil. Big high level number. Check uh, GITA if you want the exact price. And so these are fixed costs that you pay once, but you have to pay them and it, it, on a small group like us which doesn't have uh, old money to to pay for everything it's uh, a significant up up, up cost uh, fr uh, up front cost uh, when we settle in an area now other stuff that we do uh, we do have to pay is you want station to dock up what station to mine moon uh, you want uh, you want right arrow to produce so a medium structure uh, a medium size structure that you will uh, that you come fully fitted will will cost you with the core like uh, 1.5 to 2 to 2 billion maybe and that's without rigs so each of these system you want to put a station because you want a local dock up in every state and in every station if you want to have your spaces efficient uh, you don't have to like we do some sacrifice eventually when our wall with this was tighter at the beginning uh, when you become richer well you kind of allow yourself a little more luxury of having a local dock up and but still that's that's huge expenses uh, especially if you start rigging them because if you if you start adding a reprocessing rig uh, well any types of rig really but industrial rig will cost you a t2 rig will cost you on a large structure 1.5 billion so you're talking 2 billion for the structure plus 1.5 per rig so if you're adding four rigs on that thing your your medium structure is already worth uh, almost uh, well uh, around six bill six six to seven bill for your for a medium sized structure so even though it look like you're make wow you're making a lot of money yeah but the expenses to set everything up is is huge uh, sometime uh the way we work inside womp is i'm always uh, I, I try to to publish our timetable of the next system or next Thing that we're working toward so that the people know what's coming uh, to to set up the entire space here the way we would like to we're talking about 150 mil a uh, bill uh, worth of structure uh, we start we were start we, we started small we've had a medium sized structure and as we have the ability to purchase more structure we add local dock up we add more station we add rig so we're we're adding stuff as we go along as the wallet allow us 
Uh, so a big limiting factor, ISK is actually a limiting factor to setting yourself up because we control the space pretty well since we're there, but we, we have to, to, to have the, the, the financial backbone to be able to set up our industrial uh, backbone. And if we're talking, uh, if you're talking large structure, you want to go with a Fortisar, you're going to go a Fortisar plus the fit plus the, plus the core, uh, 15 to 20 bill. So yeah, the, the, these things are, these things are expensive. So there, there's taxes, uh, there's revenue, but it's not like you're not putting all of that in your pocket and becoming a rich CEO. Obviously, the, there's an economy of scale that is significant. Uh, if I have a, if a, stru a structure that cost me two bill to put down or, or six bill, if you're talking like a fully rig uh, uh, reaction at an or at an order that you're putting on grid, uh, it's costing you six bill if you got 300 people that are using it or if you have uh, 600 people that are using it. Uh, so there, there, there's a big strength in number uh, because, well, more people mean more taxes, mean more people using your structure, mean more people to defend them. So there is a law of number here. Uh, and at 300 member, we are in... Uh, Eve scale, uh, medium size core, a medium size alliance, medium to small size alliance. Uh, we're nowhere near goons uh, territory. Uh, we are, but we are, I mean, we're 300 people, so we're larger than a, a lot of the small alliance. Who, who for them, one structure is a massive investment or it, it, a significant investment. So anyway, that's kind of what I wanted to share. So you're seeing that uh, it is it is what it is. I mean, a, a, at some at, at our prime, uh, if you remove that that was exceptional exceptionless expense, we would have an income of maybe twenty bill a month, and we would have expenses uh, again if you put this rp depending on a, a fixed fixed cost of about uh, of about five bill and another variable cost of five to ten bill so we were racking in uh, regular profit except when we ended up losing multiple large scale battle and having a lot of srps to to uh, to pay the way we're working now i'm not showing you the exact uh, revenue that we have here and especially the exact expense because i don't know uh, at the coalition level how much i'm allowed to share but uh, the way it works right now is that we do contribute as a member alliance to the coalition srp fund so the the srp is managed at the coalition level so instead of having variable uh, cost for srp it's basically a fixed cost that i'm paying uh, every month to the coalition uh, and they handle srp for uh, coalition fleet if we are if we want to do a warm fleet on our own and pay for srp then we would have to pay it from uh, from what we're uh, we're making but uh, the, our biggest expense right now is setting up our industrial operation uh, we do have station in most system. We have started rigging up with the most important, like the biggest priority that we had for rigs to get bonus because uh, rigs add a lot of value to an industrial supply chain. So we, we did start to rig our structure. We're nowhere near uh, where we want to be. Uh, we want to add a fort to be able to have a local market uh, to have uh, to have cap. We want to add an asbel at some point because I, even though you saw me uh, bitch a little bit about uh, cap prices to manufacture them, we still want to be in a situation where we can manufacture them and we uh, and we don't expect the price to stay crazy like this forever. Uh, so and we are an industrial corp so we do want, want to have a production as bell anchored at some point uh we will want a tetera especially when you're gonna get the uh, ice uh, you're gonna get the 
moon goo and gas compression uh, refining tetara will make so much more sense uh, another thing that is handled at the coalition level though because uh, our biggest revenue here was moon tax and obviously the best moon r64 uh, are the one that will net you the most money uh, the way it works is uh, the r64 are nationalized at the coalition level here uh, so we're the we are making moon tax but on the so the lower scale uh, moon r32 and r16 uh, but it's nowhere near as, as as much as we were making in pure blind, obviously. So anyway, that's pretty much what I wanted to I wanted to show you. Uh, I didn't want to use the regular series to go to di to dig into uh, details like this because I I well I think it deserved an episode uh, of its own, and at the same time I think that. Uh, being transparent with our revenue and I think it it had to the value of the series uh, because you've been I mean most member here most uh, follower here uh, I've been watching the series from the start and you saw me grow from a, a little a one a solo guy to a small alliance to a mid alliance and I think that putting forward the economic of that is uh, add value to the to the entire story because you're seeing a little bit of the detail and i know that i've been uh, like going more into the the general like i've been going less into production detail and more into high level stuff uh, managing the alliance and the big the big uh, step of what is happening each week uh, so i felt that Doing a little deep down in the uh, dive down in the number like this was interesting. Uh, one thing that's for sure is that uh, you want you want as an alliance to to be in control of that. So if you're an alliance leader, uh, do get those number. It's a little bit of work. It takes about an hour every month to extract those numbers, but but it is worth it to to trace it from month to month and to know where where you're going with that so anyway i hope you guys enjoyed this uh, this little uh, special thing and uh, well if you do leave a comment if you didn't leave a comment also uh, and uh, see you guys uh, friday for the usual episode bye bye